Hello, and welcome to another edition of Money Talks. We're joined again today by Mark Alemo of LCW. Hi, Mark, how are you? Great, Matt, how are you? Uh, Mark has been a CPA for over 20 years, and we appreciate uh, bringing your experience to the table today. Um, Mark, this show primarily targets real estate investors, uh, people looking to grow their wealth through real estate. Um, how can we help people uh, to understand up front um, how to be structuring themselves if they're looking to be a long-term investor in the real estate industry? Certainly, great question, Matt. So um, what's great about, and again, I'm not an attorney, I play one sometimes, but um, I'm not an attorney, so you certainly wanna get competent legal advice, but I, I can speak from my experience. Um, first and foremost, whether it's one piece of investment property you wanna buy or multiple pieces of investment property, you want to make sure that getting into this venture is not going to hurt you in case something catastrophic happens. Now, catastrophe doesn't happen until we don't expect it, right? So um, first and foremost, what most, most investors want to do for anything that is not owner occupied is take title to the property in the name of a limited liability company. Uh, limited liability company essentially says at the end of the day, if it's an absolute catastrophe, the most that you can lose is the money and the equity that is in that limited liability company. You can't lose your house, you can't lose your checking account, you can't lose any personal assets, personal retirement, anything. Um, this is very different than a realty trust. Realty trusts are just straw trusts, so there's a little bit of privacy as to who the ultimate owner of a piece of real estate is. But So you wanna take title in the name of an LLC. Um, as you grow and as you purchase additional um, pieces of real estate, People have different schools of thought. It's also based on your own personal risk tolerance, but um, you don't have to have a, a new LLC for every piece of real estate in Massachusetts. That could get very, very expensive. They're about 500 bucks a year. Um, you can have multiple assets in that, but as you keep growing, you wanna be mindful of how many pieces of real estate, how much exposure you have, um, also what the complexion of that exposure is in that LLC. As you continue to evolve though, it's not just, oh, let me just keep filling up LLC buckets. You may want to get to a situation where you want to say, hey, why don't I create a management company that provides uh, more of a traditional corporate structure, enables you to more easily have uh, company health insurance, company retirement plans, uh, contribute uh, heavier earnings count towards Social Security, which many people do want. Um, so they can have their their 40 quarters for Medicare and they can also you know maximize their Social Security. Um, and what's great about doing the LLCs initially is whether you just end up having a couple of LLCs and that's it, or you end up having an empire um, with a management company, you're setting yourself down a path that, um, you know, really is dynamic and can be flexible based on uh, what your end goals and objectives are. That sounds great. Uh, so it sounds like thinking about not only LLCs, but also um, getting into a management company it's definitely something that we want to be looking into as long-term real estate investors. Um, Mark, thank you. We know you see this kind of stuff all the time. Thanks for being with us today. And thank you all for listening. Join in next time for another edition of Money Talks.